learning TypeScript using React can be tough. Figuring out all the different types to use, figuring out how to correctly define your components can be challenging, especially if you're just starting out your TypeScript journey by jumping in to TypeScript from the start. So I'm here to help. We're gonna go and look step by step at how to define your components using TypeScript. And we're gonna go to some places you might not have even seen before, like how to use generics in your TypeScript components which makes them even cooler and easier to use. So let's jump right into it. All right, so we're back at it. Now we're gonna look at TypeScript and React. And the first thing we're gonna look at is this cheat sheet. This is an awesome cheat sheet. Uh, it's actually gonna cover a lot more than I'm gonna cover in this. But I think I'm gonna cover the components part in this video at a bit more level of detail and talk about some of the edge cases and some of the more unique ways to define your React components. And let's get after it. So the first thing we're gonna do is create our React app. And to do that, I'm gonna use Create React App. I'm not gonna do it quite the same way as they have it here, but you can certainly feel free to do it this way as well. I'm just gonna use the template for Create React App. So let's bring up our terminal, and I'm gonna go into my temp directory, and then I'm gonna use yarn, create, react app, and I'll give it a name of, I guess, TS for TypeScript, CRA for create react app, and I guess just test, it's fine. And then I'm gonna go back to that cheat sheet and grab the template, because that's the same. So it's dash dash template TypeScript. And I'll paste that in there, and that's gonna go build out the standard Create React app is gonna look exactly the same as your normal Create React app, except that it's gonna be .tsx files as opposed to .jsx files, T being TypeScript. And then on the TS side, there's gonna be, you have TS instead of JS, so. But in this case, I think it's actually all TSX because the, Anytime you have JSX syntax inside of a file, you have to use the extension TSX, which is not as, there's not, it's not as stringent on the JS side, but it is on the TypeScript side, so. All right, let's bring up, uh, let's go into that directory and then bring up VS Code. And let's have a look around. So over here in our source directory, we've, yep, we got those TSX files. So anytime that you use the JSX syntax, which means that you're putting what looks like HTML, but is actually creating JavaScript for you, that JavaScript JSX syntax in there, you have to use the extension .tsx. And it looks like, well, a couple of things over here with the TS, but otherwise, mostly TSX. So let me go and pare this down, because we don't really need all that. And then I'll make the CSS a little bit easier to use. So I'll make that margin auto, make the uh, maximum size of this 800, just so we can put it in kind of in the middle of the screen and then make the font size XX large, just so we can all see it. And there we go. That's the only changes I'm gonna make. Let's fire this up. Okay, so an empty screen, how exciting is that? So first thing we're gonna do is create a uh, heading component. Let's just try that out first. So I'm gonna use, let's call this conventional props. And we'll do a, we'll make a heading. So we'll call that function heading. And it's gonna take a title. So how do we define what a title should be? Well, we'll just use the standard object definition in TypeScript. So in this case, I'll, we'll do title string. So in this case, we're saying that we want to destructure this object coming in, but the object itself needs to be defined as a title, as a string. And you can go and make an, a parameter optional by just doing question mark if you want. And then we'll return out Let's just say an H1 with that title. But this isn't in the children, right? It's a parameter, it's a property. So let's move that back to here. Title equals hello there. And 
we'll take a look. Okay, pretty good, pretty good so far. So what do I get out of this? Well, I get hinting, so if I were to go and bring up code hinting, I get title in there and it tells me, and then if I were to go put in like a two, it would tell me, no, 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 that's not the right thing. Number's not assignable to a string. I can put in hello, but that's that's really a little verbose. I don't really need all that, so just go back with title hello, just like that. Pretty easy. So the other thing we like to do in React is to use children, you know, have, have children properties, so have, have a container. So I'm gonna basically create this where the title in this case would be the whatever the child element is in there. So call this heading again, but this time we'll say it's with content. And we'll say that there's children and that children, well, we'll start off with a string. How's that work? So heading content, hi. Okay, let's see if that works. No, oh, it does. That's pretty cool. So it automatically makes sure that that's a, a piece of string. But if I were to do something like uh, strong, hi. All right, does that work? No, well, it doesn't work because the type of element is not assignable to a string. So it's expecting that children is a string when it's not. So what I like to do is actually use React node in here. And that brings it in from here. And this will pretty much take really anything. And another question is kind of what is this actually going to return? Well, you don't really need to worry about that too much. TypeScript is gonna handle that for you, but if you are interested in, in that, um, I tend to use React element as the output here. Uh, but in reality, it's a React element or null is kind of what it's expecting. So, but in this case, we're only gonna return a, a React element. So there you go. This is like one of the things that a lot of people run into right away, which is if you're gonna be building a, a UI framework that has you know container classes and stuff like that, like the ability to go and define you know, what is actually supposed to be in the content is, is really important. Okay, so another thing that trips people up is default props. So let's talk about that for a second. So let's say I wanna build another container and I wanna have a heading, but the heading's gonna have a, a default in it. So I'm gonna say, let's set up that container first. I'm gonna have container, and it's gonna take a heading. And that heading is gonna be a also a React node, like that. And now let's actually try this out. Container foo, right? And well, that's a problem because we don't have a heading in there. So what I wanna do is have a default for that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new constant. We'll call it uh, default container props. And then I'm gonna set the heading to a strong with my heading in it, just like that. Cool. And the next thing I'm gonna do is define, take these guys. Well, actually, here, here's an, there's a couple of different ways to do this. Let me do it the sort of grungiest way first. I'm gonna take this out, and then I'm going to use and type of default container props. So what this is gonna do is you can merge two types together to create kind of a composite type. So in this, in this case, it's taking this React node here and it's adding on this the types that are defined in this constant. So that would be a, a heading, with what, probably a React node or React element in there. Now I go and add that heading in there as well. So let's do you know, div, make the heading in H1, and then put this in as just the children, that's fine. Oops, sort to bounce around like that. But now how do I actually get them to be the default props? So get tell, do container dot default props and then just give it that default container props. 
Okay, let's see if that works. So ideally, if I haven't actually put a heading on there, it'll automatically give me, well, what does it say? Uh, my heading. Okay, so we're expecting my heading with a contents of foo. So let's see if that worked. Yep, it did. That's great. Okay, cool. Awesome. Uh, a nicer way to do this, I would say, would be to define it like this. Grab this out, say type. And we'll say call this container props. And then just paste that back in there. Put that like that. And, you know, I think that's a little bit cleaner, more readable for sure. Cool. Okay, now if we go back to our cheat sheet, we actually have gotten pretty far into section two around getting started, and this is defining what the, the functional components are. And I just wanna point out this, this section here, which is around react.fc. So you might see this in code. Let's take, for example, this one heading, um, we'll call it fc heading or something like that. You might see something like this, const heading fc, and then defined as react.fc. And then in here, you, you put the title string. And then for this, you'd have title. And the rest of it pretty much falls on from there. So take that out. That in there. OK. So this works, but it's not considered the state of the art. And that's actually what that cheat sheet is telling you. It's, it's, this is kind of the old way to do it. Um, the only thing that that's really adding is it's adding a default prop for children, uh, which, you know, you may or may not want, you know, if you don't want to support children, if you do it this way, where you're just saying, I only want a title, then if somebody tries to wrap some child elements inside of a heading, it's going to blow up on them. So that's great. So this allows you to much more uh, granularly define what exactly what you want in your properties, whether that's children or whatever. All right, so let's continue on kind of digging a little bit deeper down than that cheat sheet does. So I'm gonna take this out. Yeah, okay, now we're just down to the, uh, just down to the code. And we're gonna start talking about functional properties. So add a new comment, functional props. And in this case, I'm gonna go and create a, a component that has a, a button in it but what is rendered in the component is actually defined by a function, which is, is pretty interesting. So let's call this text with number. And then what are my properties? So my properties are children, which in this case, I'm gonna define as a function and that function is gonna take a number and then return back a React node. And I'll create some state in here. Now, I'm not gonna get into a full discussion about, about state or state managers in this particular video. This is mostly about components, uh, but the way that you define what you'd expect to see in this state would be either, I could do that like a one in this case, or a number, right? I'm expecting a number. And this is going to work for me because that's basically, uh, that's the equivalent of just saying I want a number in there, right? But if you've got a state where this could be null, for example. Like it might start off by null and then become a number once you get some data back or something like that. Uh, what you need to do is do number or null, right? So just like you can do and with types and create composite types, you can create uh, or types using that or. So but in this case, I really do want a number. So I'll return a div. And then within that, another div that has a button in it. Call that add. And on click. Then when you click it, it just does a state set with the state plus one. And then in here for the content, I'm actually going to use that child function, 
with that number, so state. So let's give this a try. So I'm gonna go in on here, text with number, and then in the child spot, instead of giving it some actual React elements or strings or what, what have you, I'm actually gonna put a function in here. So that's gonna take, and you can see it's gonna, it, it actually wants me to do this. So I'll bring that up. It's saying that children is supposed to be a num number or a function that takes a number. So let's do that. Today's <laughs> number is num. All right, let's give that a go. Nice, okay, so really pretty nice uh, interface there. I've seen a lot of these kind of functional components with animation libraries, stuff where, where you know, you've got a container that's actually managing some state, like this, this number in this case, and then it's calling back to you to do the rendering, but that rendering needs to change based on that state. So same sort of thing with a prop, with a header prop. So let's bring that, try that too. So we'll have a header. All right. And let's just say that we have a header in there. We'll call it uh, H2 or H3, whatever, header, and then also state. Okay, now this is incomplete. So the way we do that is say header and then give it a callback. Again, very clean interface. So again, num, number, and we're gonna return, you know, uh, let's, let's say uh, span with you know, header, no. Oops, don't need the, that. Okay, there we go. Okay, and now if I click on that, everything's great. Cool. Well, how do I make this optional? It's an interesting question. So in that case, I can just do question mark dot like that. And that way, that, that will only get called if there is an actual header element. So if I were to remove that at this point, it's not gonna blow up, but it is gonna put an empty H2 in there, because these guys are gonna be unconditionally rendered, where this one is just conditionally rendered. So if I wanted to do that, I could just say, if I have a header, then do that. There you go, so there you go. Optional chaining to make sure that you only call the function if it's there, otherwise that looks great. Cool. Another thing that they don't cover in that, and I think is actually really important, and I actually saw a lot of this in the AWS UI uh, exploration that we did a couple weeks back, and it was generics around functions. So let's go, let's try that. So I'm gonna make a list function component, and that function, we'll call it, I guess, list, and it's gonna take items, and it's gonna take a render function, right? So the idea is it's gonna manage the list for me, and then it's going to um, call render on every item in that list. So how am I gonna define this? Well, items is going to be something? We don't know quite what it is yet, right? So what you do is you make a generic. So I'm gonna say that it is of a, let's see, list item. It's an array of list items. So over here, I'm gonna say that part of our template is that we want a, we're gonna take whatever the type is on items here and that becomes list item. And then I can reuse that. And when I say, when I render, I'm gonna pass an item. Well, how's that gonna be defined? What's well, gonna be defined as a list item. And it's gonna return a React node, just like that. So now we actually have to define this. It's actually pretty easy to find. So let me do uh, return, and then I'll create an unordered list, take all the items, map through them, get back an item and an index.
give the key as an index. And then now what do I do? Well, I need to call that render function, right? So I'm gonna render and give it that item. Pretty cool, huh? So I go down here, I go to list. I'm gonna try this out. So what do I need? Well, I need items. And that's gonna be array, let's say uh, Jack, uh, Sadie, Oso, and my render is a function and check it out. So it's already telling me that I'm gonna take a string. So it's gone and looked at the type that was in that items, knowing that it was an array of strings, right? And it's taken that string because that's now list item, list item in this case is string, and it's applied that to render. So now render takes a string which is a string. I don't really need to define that, but I'm going to, because why not? And I'm gonna put in there a div, and it's gonna have the uh, item to lowercase, just to show off that it's an actual string. So everything in here should be a lowercase string. Let's take a look, yep, that worked just fine. So that's, that's a really nice way to define this, this class, right? This, this actually really kind of extends the functionality of React by allowing us to, to, to do this kind of generic functions. I think that's, that's really cool. Okay, so the last thing I wanna cover before I wrap this up is to talk about class-based components. Now, we don't do a lot of these anymore. If you are doing class-based components, you probably shouldn't be. Uh, but, and I think one of the only valid areas is around error boundaries, but still, it's good to know. So let's try that out. So let's create a class component and how to strongly or TypeScriptize those. So it starts off pretty simple. Class, let's say my container extends react.component. We know this, we've seen this before, but in TypeScript you can do a generic. And you can say, great, okay, so my property, the first item in this is the properties. The second item is the state. Well, I'm not gonna put any state. You can see P for properties, S for state. Um, I'm just gonna use properties in this case, and we're gonna say that, uh, again, we have a heading, a, a header, which is a React node. And let's just, you know what? Let's just call this my heading. Because all the stuff that was working there before is gonna work in this too. All the stuff that was working with the components and the functional components is going to work here as well. So we'll just create that render function. If you've never seen one of these, so much the better for you, really. And then return. And then we'll do uh, an H1 with that title. Uh, again, in the case of a class component like this, you got to use this.props. And then we'll check it out. We've already got title ready to go. Just drop that in there. And now we can do my header. It's not happy because I haven't put in a title, I think. Let's take a look. Yep, title, there you go. There you go. Save that out. Hey, hey rockin'. Okay. So there you go. Let's just go back up from the start again. So we've got our support for conventional properties, right? These are pretty simple. So if we just give it, you know, the list of the of the different properties you've got, and then in the next section, the the different types that you have associated with those properties. For children, you're probably going to want React Node. We can actually go in, uh, over and check the uh, the definition of that. That can be all kinds of cool stuff. It can be a child, fragment, portal, boolean, null, and undefined. Pretty, pretty wide spectrum there of things that could be. Uh, and then down here, we start to talk about default props. So here's a nice little pattern for you. It's really backed up by that cheat sheet. So you're defining the default container props and then you're using the type of that. So you don't need to redefine that. You're letting that define it for you uh, in combination with children. If you don't use children in this case, then you don't have to bring that in. You can just use the type of that. Uh, then you're reusing that definition of container props here. 
again, we can also get rid of that. That's that's basically defined, but we can we can keep that around if we want. And then setting the default props so they're actually functional in this case. All right, and then we get into functional props. So this is one where you're sending a function instead of either an array or a, a React node. You're sending a function that will in turn create React nodes. Um, and then you get to define what that the API signature of that function and that output. And then this is how you do the same one for any kind of prop that is a function. And then the really interesting one I say about generics. So we're defining a list component. We are defining it as a generic. So there are parts of this API signature that are generic, in this case, the list item. And we're expecting an array of those list items and a render that takes that list item type and returns a React node. And the great thing about this is it's completely reusable. That list item could be a Pokemon. It could be a string. It could be, it could be all kinds of things. And it's going to go and, and render that out for you. Uh, so this is a really, really, really nice pattern if you are a, a component designer or somebody who's working on a component library. I mean, really, really have a good look at this one. I think this is a great thing, and I, I really appreciate seeing it in that AWS UI library. And then finally, into class components, you got the header with the title, and uh, yeah, it's pretty, pretty standard stuff, but this is how you define props. Again, the second thing would be if you would have any state, you could define that in here as well. All right, there you have it, TypeScript and React. All right, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned a lot about how to define your React components using TypeScript and all the different variants therein. I think that template one is really interesting, so that'll be interesting to see. If any questions or comments or further clarifications to make, be sure to put those in that comment section down below or you can jump on the Discord server. There's a TypeScript channel in there to talk about it. And while you're there, you should check out the J Music Community Project, which turned out to be a blast. We're doing a lot of fun stuff in the music space, creating an algorithmic chord book, which is really cool, and putting a fun glass morphic interface on it using state-of-the-art tools, Tailwind and all the rest. It's great stuff. Lots of fun. Come on and check it on out. In the meantime, of course, feel free to like and share this video with your friends. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. But in the meantime, be happy, be healthy, and be safe.